Pat and I, as well as meeting on all levels, um, one of the things we found in common is that we'd each had very complementary, slightly diff quite different in a way, mm. but complementary spiritual and business experience and psychological education, I suppose you might call it. Um, and when we get got together, it was like this enormous fusion of um, inspiration that happened between us. Um, it was like we were together like 24-7 for the first several months of our, in fact, for the first five years of our relationship. And it was a bit like being on retreat, intensive retreat. There was just so much going on. It was such a fruitful time. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened to me was I realised I needed to let go of my ordination mm -hmm. and let go of all formal connection with a religion and open up to something much more universal, which in fact I'd always been connected with. But I guess I just hadn't quite had the perspective to realise that I didn't need to be attached to a particular religion or spiritual tradition in order to practice. Mm. Um, but I was able to do that um, through this fusion and inspirational time that I had with Pat. So I did decide to resign my ordination. Simultaneously with that, we realised that we wanted to put out a body of work together and it, we, we referred to it as our our baby and for some time we didn't quite know what to call it or, or how to call it even um, we just knew that we had an offering that we wanted to to give many of my friends were already asking me to teach meditation um, mm. here in Devon which is something I've been doing in London for some years and again I just didn't feel I wanted to be teaching meditation as an ordained Buddhist I felt I wanted to be teaching it as you know, fresh, independent voice, really. Um, and so I did make the decision to resign my ordination, which was very elegantly done and, and happily done, um, with a lot of gratitude for the years I, I spent with that order. Um, so, yeah, what was this baby? What was this baby that we wanted to offer with this fusion? Um, I was going through a time of... of I think something to do with resigning the ordination and letting go of being in a community allowed a lot more spiritual fruit to come through me and I actually became very visionary and mystical for a few months. I had quite a lot of visionary experiences and I think what was happening was I was opening up to my intuition and my inner world with a lot more confidence rather than trying to thrust it into tight parameters of defined religion and religious experience um, and so um, we felt that there was there was something we could do with all this fruit and one of our friends said to us hmm sounds like you might be life coaches and we said what's life coaching because that was well, I don't know 10 years ago in the UK life coaching hadn't really kind of broken certainly has now and it certainly had in the States by then. Um, so we found out what life coaching was all about and yeah I realised it might be useful to have a training in life coaching and I found a very good course um, and there was a bit of a miracle around that because I've been researching all these courses and I happened to phone this college who happened to be just enrolling their very first ever life coaching trainees and they just happened to be offering the course free of charge, which was amazing. So I took that as, a, as an immense um, yes, and I dived into that course. And then Pat and I thought, well, what do we want to call this practice, this coaching practice or whatever we might want to call it? And I always had the word thrive going as a, as a juicy word. And... I said, what about calling it Thrive? And Pat said, no, what about the craft of thriving? And so we've called it Thrive Craft. Mm. It's the practical ways, the art and science of how to thrive. And so we've brought together all my psychology because I did do a psychology degree back when I was a, a student, a teenage student. Um, then I had all my um, spiritual training, you might call it, and then I did my uh, life coaching training. So Thrivecraft be became the, the vehicle for all that and all of Pat's stuff as well. Mm. Um, and we began to, I began to coach people one to one 
and also to run groups and courses. And what we found was that there were certain themes that came up again and again and again for people. One, of course, is love and relationships. It's people looking for the right relationship or they want to improve the one they've got or they need to learn if they need to let go of the relationship they're in. Um, so that became one branch of our work, love and relationships. And we've ended up um, running courses called Get Ready for Love which have been very popular and very fun. Another branch of work, something about Totnes, there's a lot of incomers, like I explained, and a lot of creatives and entrepreneurs, and many people are artists or therapists or green ecologists, and they come to this part of the world with their, their dream, and they want to set up a business or a project, and they find that they don't actually have, maybe, the business skills to carry it through. Because I had such good business training with the Right Livelihood Businesses in London, um, I was able to craft together, and Pat has business training as well, business management background, we were able to craft together some courses for these people, who are mostly our clients already, um, called Mind Your Own Business. 